Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verlus here, and it's time to set your hype to maximum because reviews for the Pokemon Sword and Shield Isle of Armor DLC are starting to drop. I wasn't expecting this, but now my hype is at maximum. So if you end up enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, and subscribe because it's time. Isle of Armor begins now. Let's get into the details. So, Pokemon Sword and Shield Isle of Armor Preview from the Telegraph series gets its first ever DLC. Isle of Armor marks Pokemon's first leap into downloadable content, but should have stuck with the standard Director's Cut version. Well, that's a bit of a bummer after the hype start of this video, but if we just get rid of all the opinionated clickbait crap that's just been plaguing journalism and making it worthless, there should be some good information here for the real Pokemon fans. So when I first reviewed Pokemon Sword and Shield, I'll admit to feeling, well, less than blown away. Okay, the Telegraph is like double hot garbage because they don't have any of the new information that's being reported on by the other reviews, and also feels like they're kind of obfuscating how they got access to the gameplay by making it sound more hands-on than it really is. So this is coming from IGN, we saw 30 minutes of Pokemon Sword and Shield Isle of Armor DLC, we got an extended new demo of the first expansion pass content, and they've been treated to more than 30 minutes of uninterrupted gameplay from the beginning of the Isle of Armor from Pokemon Sword, and it's being done through Pokemon Company representatives, and that's amazing. I love it, because it sounds like that no reviewer or no one is going to have early access to the Isle of Armor DLC, that because of Datamon, because of the leaks, because of the piracy, it looks like the Pokemon Company is giving very curated access to the information. Now, we kind of saw this Pokemon Let's Go and the very early stuff from Game Informer when it came to Pokemon Sword and Shield and reviews did end up coming out, but I'm guessing there's like no physical access or no early access to the codes for DLC, which means everyone should be on the same page and then it's fair. Also, games reviewers don't seem to matter as much anymore, so I'm, I'm liking this, and I'm hoping it's going to stay that way. I kind of touched upon this in my last video. I was like, I wonder what's going on with the actual content itself. And now we get to find out with a surprise early review of the game. There are two specific things I want to point on or point out for my hands-off demo. First, I noticed that the Pokemon in the first trainer battle were around level 60, the same as the highest Pokemon in the trainer's party. Okay, Nintendo's Demetrius Boggs told me that new Pokemon expansion pass areas, trainers, and wild Pokemon scale to your own Pokemon's levels. Now I'm wondering if it's one for one, or if it's based off of the badges, because as we saw in the wild area, Pokemon scaled based on where you were in the game, and then capping out at level 60 wild Pokemon, with like max level 70s and like the highest level max raid battles and stuff. So I'm wondering if it's going to be like that, where if you've beaten the game, all the game, all the Pokemon will be level 60, or is it going to be like the Battle Tower, and it's an even match, and you have to out-strategize your opponent, or have better IVs, EVs, which means if you're in the post-game content, it's going to be easier for you, but that's what you've earned, and if you're just kind of like playing the game super casually, it might be very difficult, or might cause you to learn how the higher end works on it, where you have to have exclusive moves, and just overall stronger Pokemon to have the advantage needed to win out in these completely evenly matched battles. Also, I'm guessing if the opponent has like an unevolved level 60 Pokemon or level 80 or level 100, then it's still going to work out for you. But that's massive. That's what people want. Game Freak's listening. Game Freak's listening. Game Freak's doing everything that people have wanted. Open world Pokemon game. A main series game on console. No more third version cash grabs that just don't add enough content into the games. Alternative multiplayer, a better ranked online, actual DLC. Like what is happening now is something I never thought would happen in Pokemon because of what happened in the 3DS. And even Pokemon Let's Go didn't get a major DLC update or anything added into the game. We also have live occurring events, more obtainable Pokemon than any other game. Now that the Isle of D Armor DLC is dropping, like, Game Freak is doing everything right, and fans, they real like, none of their complaints are valid at this point. And then this, this is the insanity that people want. But it also means that since they scale with your level, and as we saw from some of the other reviews and the other information coming out, it's that once you make it to the wild area, you can have access to the Isle of Armor. So you can play it at any state of the game, and your overall experience is going to reflect that. So I think that's really cool. Not only that, but these areas can be accessed as soon as you- Okay, cool, they're covering it. Good job, IGN. As soon as you reach the wild area, just a few hours into those games. So, whether you've just started or you've already completed the post game and have a full party of level 100 Pokemon, both parts of the expansion pass, the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra, will match your Pokemon's level. Also, they made a separate article about the level scaling, and they have this right here. 
As of now, we're unsure whether the DLC areas will continue to scale with your level, or if the areas become locked to the level your Pokemon were when you first visit. But we will have an update as soon as we hear back from the Pokemon company. Regardless, this is great news, and I don't really see anything of an update right there. But I mean, I think there is some different things that can happen. Maybe there is a cap, like maybe level 75, level 80, even if you have level 100. It also seems to be the Pokemon that you bring to the wild area. But it have to scale. Don't you just like swap out low level for high levels in the box and then things get kind of weird? Or maybe it's just based off of badges and overall gameplay progress because they did show level 60, which is the cap in the wild area beyond the 50 that we see in like flat scaling for competitive. So weird things. We already knew that the Isle of Armor would at least include an additional wild area, but this demo confirmed that the entirety of the island is basically a massive wild area. I thought that was already confirmed, they were just like, yeah, the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra are all wild area, but now we just have like the pure 100% confirmed. With many more diverse terrains than on the mainland, coastal beaches, marshes, forests, caves, even deserts on my short tour. At many intervals during the story and upon entering new areas, camera would sweep over each spot, creating a beautifying panoramic that highlighted the topography of the island. Seems immersive. I like it. All seems though is all these can be explored as soon as you get to the island without needing to progress the story, which leaves the pacing in the player's hands. And that was something I wanted to know about. And that also makes it feel like it caps based on your progress in the main game, maybe slightly higher, maybe something like that. Because yeah, like you just get access to it and you just go for it. That's the thing. That's also what I'm contemplating myself. Do I want to get Urshifu and beat the story super quick and maybe have access to fully everything? Do I want to start discovering some of the Pokemon that are allowed back inside of Pokemon Sword and Shield with this? Ooh, I just realized there might be a Pokemon Home update. Then that Pokemon Home update is data mine before Pokemon Sword and Shield. We'll have the full list of returning Pokemon. But yeah, I want to like, get access to the new wild area, the new items to discover and stuff like that before the story potentially. However, looks like the story doesn't even gate you, so you're free to do whatever you want. I like it. Overall, each of these micro areas seem to be a little more full with environmental touches, logs, trees, than the mainland isle there was. And that's just because we, we can see that from the trailer. And it's because, like, Pokemon Sword and Shield is an entire game. The wild area is a substantial part of that, but it's not the game. The wild area is pretty much all of the Isle of Armor with a smaller story. So, saw Pokemon on a tree branch in the forest. Though Nintendo can confirm how we interact with those Pokemon. I guess that kind of reminds me of if you go into the Glimwood Tangle and you just kind of see the wandering uh, impidimps around. Man, I haven't said that name in a while because it's all about Grimmsnarl for competitive. So yeah, you can see those Pokemon around, so the interaction is going to be interesting. I assume it could be lured down from a tree by whistling at it, like you lure flying Pokemon down from the sky. That's kind of a cool interaction, or if you shake a tree and you get to see the Pokemon that falls on you, that's pretty cool as well. I saw a huge, and I mean massive, Whale Lord in the water from the beach. Not sure whether this was a two-scale representation of an overworld Pokemon, but or if it was a part of the story or had some purpose. Most likely it was just the wild Pokemon in the overworld, and I know that that's not surprising, but seeing a giant Pokemon in the water brought me joy in that moment. That's cool. Saw a large variety pack on this island. Happy report that a few of my personal favorites returned. Did ask if the large inclusion of all Pokemon previously unavailable was in response to feedback, but the Pokemon company said Olive Armor expansion was all Get slapped, you National Dex idiots! Because they're like, see, this is why we complain. It, it's it's how it, it's how we get Game Freak to to give us what we want. Keep crying, guys, because it works. No, it was clear and like just basic game development. Pokemon Sword and Shield was in development for over three years. Like it pretty much debunks almost all the arguments right there. So then we think about it, it's like, yeah, the Isle of Armor was started in development years ago as it, as they were developing regular Pokemon Sword and Shield with the idea. So like when they announced the dex cut back at E3 and it pissed off a lot of people, they did that with the 100% knowledge that the Isle of Armor was already being developed with Pokemon that were going to be added in to kind of slowly add into it. And now with the Isle of Armor, there's more Pokemon available in Pokemon Sword and Shield than any other Pokemon game. It's stupid. So yeah. That was always the plan. Makes sense. That Occam's Razor. People are stupid. Of course, there was more to the demo than just the tour of the island and of the Marriott of Pokemon. The first 30 minutes of story, which included introductions to Clara, Avery, Mustard, and 
yeah, stuff like that. So you get to see the island home. Because this demo was for Pokemon Sword, Poison type Pokemon Trainer, and arrival for the expansion, Clara greeted us upon arrival. She quickly outed herself as a self interested mean girl type. Ooh, got some Sundari going on. Hey, we got mean rivals again! Everyone's getting what they want! Okay. After defeating her in battle, she instructs you not to approach the dojo. However, this is the course where you must go to progress the story. She doesn't like you taking Thunder. I like it. Once inside the dojo, after a quick battle, you'll be presented with a choice and an introduction of a move tutor that will, expect, that will accept Armorite or, we know about this, as payment. Then Mustard explains that the dojo's apprentices must complete three trials in order to earn the dojo's sacred armor. Once the challenges involve, or one challenge involves collecting max mushrooms, which are used to create a previously revealed max soup, which unlocks the ability for a Pokemon Gigantamax. Only saw a different trial. It reminded me of the mini games you might encounter as part of Pokemon Sun and Moon Island Challenge. That's fine. The game having only island challenges that upset people, but we had our real gems, and then the DLC slash gem like trials and challenges going on. Pokemon Sun and Moon beta test for Pokemon Sword and Shield. Probably something weird. It's worth mentioning, I saw a mysterious Pokemon looking over the main character from top of the dojo because of previous promotional materials. I knew it was Kubfu. And then you get to choose for that. So it's evolution, which you pick. Saw one Pagoda-like tower on the coast of the island, and that's as much as I saw. Customizable bikes, menus, trials. So it's, it's pretty much now we're getting to like the other information we saw, just kind of with different gameplay, with different uh, stuff on the side. Love exploring the wild area and catching a variety of Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's one of my favorite new features, considering that the Isle of Armor DLC seems right up my alley. I do hope the story is robust. It doesn't rely on catching Pokemon as a way to artificially pad the playtime too much. Then again, who doesn't like catching Pokemon in new places? I still feel that people refuse to accept the fact the story is the smallest part of the game and then everything else is in the post game because Pokemon is a competitive game and that is undeniable. So we got that going on. Then we have Poke Experto just kind of like capping off some of the information. So Alolan Diglett are available and there's a mini quest where you have to get where you have to find 150 Diglett around the island. We don't know the rewards, we don't know that thing. It's silly. It's fun. It's extra gameplay. It's nothing we could have expected from, like, the data mine. Maybe this is how you get Armorite Ore. Who knows? But yeah, with the Pokemon Home data mine, this wasn't suggested. So are there, are there also a couple of, like, other new items and new things that we don't know about for Pokemon Sword and Shield further enhancing the gameplay? This feels like the Totem Pokemon from Pokemon Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. Not 100% necessary, but it's an extra feature. That's what people wanted. So we also get a video seeing, like, how you travel. It's train to the Corviknight Taxi to the exclusive Corviknight building. Screenshot right there. I also, showed the, I also covered the inside from the official Pokemon information that we had. Shenanigans are indeed going down when it comes to the information. So let's refresh page, let's translate to English, and let's finish off this video. Okay, so it looks like this is just recapping the information that we already knew about. Also, there's a lot of other websites and different languages that are getting access to information. So the reviews are kind of diversifying in that way. And there is one five-minute gameplay video of a lot of new Isle of Armor stuff, but I can't review it. I can't show it because copyright is a thing. Even my face cam and stuff, I don't want to risk a strike. We'll take some screenshots from that and then, like, break down some new video and picture and then work on that in a separate video. So hit that notification bell, check in, you know, on the channel and see how it goes. But yeah, you can access it as soon as you get to Wild Area. Battles adapt to the level of your Pokemon. Challenges of the towers are to meet various tests. We also still don't know about restricted sparring, how that implies. Like, maybe there's some restricted sparring in the Tile of Water and Darkness, and then, like, it becomes just available to all Pokemon instead of just Kubfu once you beat that story. And then that's the tutor or something, I don't know. Whole island is wilderness area. Investigate from beginning. Some Pokemon, like tree branches. Many have not been allowed to try the Isle of Armor directly, but I've been given gameplay of someone from Pokemon Company International playing it. And that also just kind of brings us to the Webmaster, Poke Experto kind of saying that the era of reviews is over. The fact that reviews are already done by the video game media on the basis of gameplay, they haven't even played them, makes it quite evident the era of reviews is over. Value of saying, or what is the value of saying what you've seen for that I prefer to see it. I feel like it's actually better if the Pokemon company would just kill this off, honestly. I don't like the exclusivity, I don't like the unfairness in it, and games media and just journalism and news media in general 
has become hot garbage and just outrage culture. Like, hopefully the Pokemon company sees how terrible the Telegraph article is and just goes, yeah, we don't need to do this anymore. And a lot of the information on the IGN article didn't really do too much. So, I mean, they could have just done a Pokemon Direct. They could have just... Wait, we've had this before. Pokemon Sun and Moon, E3. They played through the first 30 minutes of the game, effectively, and then we got to see some extra features. They could have just dropped that and then, we, and then like, have... A narrator on some parts or like a follow-up article on Pokemon Company that's their review they could have just done the official Pokemon Company review publish that and then have you make your thoughts on it because this isn't a Isle of Armor gets 8.5 out of 10 from our early access gameplay no they're just saying what they saw and we can see what we saw and draw our own conclusions without any kind of bias skew or negativity or clickbait and since it seems like there's not going to be any early review copies or access, the scoring system isn't going to matter. It's over. Just play the game and enjoy it for yourself, especially with all the outrage, meaning that some people are going to hate no matter what happens. So there we go, guys. It's shenanigans. I wasn't expecting this. Seems good for everyone. Hopefully the Crown Tundra is the same. Like, it'll probably be the same. So depending on, like, if there are some copies and if people actually got to play the game, we'll find that out in the next couple of days. And maybe they'll just continue this into like Diamond Pearl remakes, which would be super awesome. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.